Okay, so this is what I'm after right here. You could see the acorn, and this tree has many acorns scattered throughout. So I will be gathering from this tree. They are ready to go. I'll just take a stick and run them in between the branches and the leaves, and that will knock them free. The best place to actually gather the acorn is on the ground. You can pick them up with ease, but you have to beat the animals. The animals love these. Okay, so we have all of our acorns gathered. You can see we have quite a bit. And these are also inspected. So I always inspect for holes. Anything that has a hole on the shell, I discard. That means bugs. Also, when you crack these open, inspect the acorn. Make sure there's no mold. You don't want that. It's very easy to shell the acorn. I just take my pestle, I crack it, and that one actually has mold. So I crack it open, and this one looks really good. And the nut sits inside of the shell. It has a nice yellow color. That's what you're after. Now these are very small. You can see the size of them. They really don't yield a whole lot, so you have to gather a whole bunch of them. Uh, once again, trying to beat the animals that get to these as well. These are not like coast live oak, which quite honestly are very nice to work with. They yield a nut about the size of an almond. So once again, we just take the pestle, crack it open, inspect the nut inside and this one I already can tell you looks really good nice yellow color so I throw it in the mortar and I'll continue on you can see I have quite a bit to process once I have all of these shelled I'll be right back with you for the next step we have the vast majority of the acorn processed. Everything's looking really good, nice and clean, beautiful yellow color. And I have plenty of reserves if I need to tap into them, but this should suffice. At this point, before I crush and pulverize the acorn with ground stone, I need to allow them to fully dry. And that shouldn't take too long. This is a very unusual year. It's warm, it's dry, it's windy. Usually around this time of the year, we get our monsoon flow and the humidity levels are, are far greater. But I will take advantage of the dry weather. I'll spread these out, allow them to dry about a week or two, and that should be fine. The reason we let them dry is so they don't stick to the ground stone. It's a lot easier to process. It's also important to keep in consideration this year is a very high yield year for the emery oak, meaning once every seven to eight years, we get far greater numbers and a higher yield in productivity. In between high yield years, I gather far less. The reason I want animals to not only survive off of their landscape, but to thrive. This is a very important resource to the natural wildlife. Uh, so we must be mindful of them as well. So my acorns have been drying for about two weeks now. And at this point I'll move on to the next step and that is crushing and pulverizing them into a coarse to fine grain flour. I have a mortar and pestle to do so. You can see that this mortar is somewhat shallow. So I add little bits in at a time and I simply break up the nut and grind it down. There is a little bit of moisture still in this, so as I crush this into the flour, I can allow it to dry once more. It exposes more surface area. It's really not hard though, you can see just a little bit of work goes a long way. Now some natives along the coast would actually take pine resin and glue a basket 
along the rim of their mortar and that helps prevent the acorn or the mesquite bean from jumping out. Okay, so as you can see, I have the acorn flour processed into a fine grain. We got a really decent yield out of the acorns that I gathered. I might even have a little bit left over, but this is plenty. So at this point, I'll continue to let the flour dry. I'll spread it over this dish for about four to five more days. And once it's completely dry, I'll move on to the next step of showing you how to leach the tannins out of the meal. Now my acorn flour is dry and it's time to leach the tannins out of the meal. It's important to leach the tannins out and not consume the acorn as it is right now or the acorn flour as it is right now because what ends up happening is the tannins, when they build up in our system, it makes it very difficult to absorb the nutrients from other food items. So what I do is I take about eight ounces of flour and I put it inside of a half a gallon mason jar. Now I'll add water, cold water, almost up to the surface. So right up here at this line. These vessels are very handy because they have your measurements on the side. And about right there. So a little bit above. I'll screw that lid on tight and I shake this mason jar. So I shake it up. Keep in mind, there's many ways of leaching acorn flour. This is just one of them. Want to shake it up good. Make sure that the flour is plenty saturated. Okay, now I let it sit. I'll let it sit in a cool, dry area and that flour will settle to the bottom. Once it settles to the bottom, I'll shake it up again. I'll do that several times, and then I'll strain the liquid from the meal. Okay, so it's been four days since I left off with you folks, and this meal is completely free of tannins. Once again, we're talking about a very repetitive process of filling the jar up with cold water, shaking it around, letting the meal settle, shake it around again, let it settle, empty off the water, fill it up with clean water, and shake it around again. So just very, very repetitive. We keep repeating that process until we taste the meal and it is bland. It should taste like nothing. It should have no bitter or tannin flavor to it. And that's where I'm at. So we will empty the contents into a cotton cloth and start cooking with the meal. Okay, so as you can see, I'm cooking these acorn cakes in cast iron, and they're looking really good. Put a little bit of cinnamon on them. They're holding together well. Now, this isn't like flour. Acorn meal is much different. Flour really holds the cake together, uh, but this tends to break up just a little bit. You can see it's not too bad, and I'm slow cooking these. So here are the cakes finally cooked. You can see when we break them open, they're pretty well done. They're even maybe just a tad bit overcooked, but that's no big deal. Everything's looking really nice. One advantage to cold water leaching is the acorn patty does tend to stick together a lot better compared to warm water leaching. So this is the method that I prefer and I recommend. I also added uh, natural and locally made agave syrup to these cakes, so that will definitely add a sweetness 
to an otherwise more bland flour or meal. And the moment of truth, giving them a try. I've cooked these many times, so <laughs> I already know how they're gonna taste. Good. Once again, a little bit overcooked. Just a little bit. But the center is perfect. Man, those are good. No bitter flavor whatsoever. The agave nectar really brings out a sweet taste. And this is more like a traditional pancake. Mm. No additives to this acorn cake whatsoever. No flour. Just simply acorn. Man, that is fantastic. I'll leave my buddy Kiowa one of these cakes. He'll enjoy it. I was actually going around this riparian zone and looking for wild grape, but they're not quite ready yet. They're just starting to turn color. They're starting to turn purple. So another month or so, it would have made a nice addition. This isn't bad. Not bad at all. Mm. That's a little burnt right there. Very sweet. And it also has, again, more of a bland, nutty flavor to it. Just excellent. Good wild food. Very, very thankful for the trees that produce these this year. Once again, a very high yield year. All right, folks, so that is just about going to wrap up this video on making and processing acorn flour. You know, again, it's unfortunate, but in our modern culture and society, we tend to think that acorns are highly toxic and even poisonous to the human body. In reality, that's not necessarily true as long as we process them correctly, as I've demonstrated in this video. I sure hope you learned something. If so, help us out. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the Primitive Lifeways channel on YouTube and share this video throughout social media. It really helps us to grow, expand, and most important, it helps us to reach a wide, diverse audience. Thank you so much once again, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.